Hi, I'm Callie from CRK Training, and in today's video, we're going to go over wrapping legs. So I'm going to show you two different types of wraps that are used pretty commonly. First, we're going to do a standing wrap, and then next, we're going to do a common polo wrap. So I'm going to start with the standing wrap, and what I want to show you here is I have two different types of wrap. So where this is used. A standing wrap is used if you have an injury that you're needing to cover and provide some cushioning for. Standing wraps are also used if you have a horse that is stocking up, meaning they're getting some swelling in their legs. This is basically applied as a pressure wrap to help push that swelling out. Uh, these standing wraps can be also be used if you're trailering and you want to you know, provide support, some support for the legs that way. What they're not used for, you don't want to turn a horse out in the field with these wraps. They're only used in the stall or like in the trailer. And also a standing wrap is for a horse that is standing around. So you don't want to be putting these on for riding or any kind of an exercise. Now anytime you wrap your horse's leg, it's important that you've practiced a little bit and that you can apply the wrap with consistent pressure and that you also know how to apply it the correct way. So that's what we're going to go over today. But I just want to say, you know, practice a little bit, practice getting your wrap in a consistent pressure because you can actually damage your horse's legs. It doesn't happen often, but it can happen, you know, if you make the wrap like really tight in one place and really loose and sloppy in another place. So just be aware of that. So I'm going to come over here. We're going to start with Ace's front leg. So anytime that you wrap, and this is going to be the same for when we go over to the other side and do the polo wrap. First of all, when you're on the ground, this is pretty basic, but I'll go over it anyway. You never want to like sit on the ground. You always want to kind of be here crouched where if something would happen, your horse would start to move around, you can stand back up really easy. And of course, that's, you know, any time that you're working on your horse's legs, we're never sitting on the ground beside our horse. So first I'm going to take this. Now with any wraps, you always start on the inside and you put the wrapping so that it's pulling the tendons basically in like this. So you always come this way, just try to keep it nice and steady. Now with these standing wraps, you want the, um, the top of the wrap is going to be kind of right below the knee here and the bottom of the wrap is going to go down to about where it is here. This is probably a good size. It's even a slight it, just a tiny bit long for Ace. It could be a little bit shorter because he's obviously a pony. He's got pretty short little legs. You wouldn't want to use this if it was really long, like, you know, down by his hoof here. And also, when you have the ending here, you want to kind of try to give this a tug and just have it so that it's not right across the front of the bone. And also, when we had that, when we started the wrap, remember we started it on the side here too. So next, I'm going to take this. And this is my quilting. This is actually the standing wrap. And I'm just going to tuck the end of it in here. And now I'm going to wrap it in the same manner. So again, I'm pulling the tendons in as I wrap. I start right in the center. And then I'm going to wrap down. And a lot of times what I'll do is just keep a consistent pressure as you come around. And then if you're wrapping where you need to really get more pressure, say for a horse that you're wrapping because you're trying to push some fluid out of their legs, as you come around the front here, this is where you want to kind of tighten it up right about here. And then just try to hold that pressure as you bring it around, bring it snug. Now when I get down to about right here, you always want to leave a little bit of white, a little bit of the quilted wrap, both at the bottom and at the top of your wrap. So when I get here, I'm going to start going back up. Again, just working on keeping this thing consistent in the pressure and then I want my wrap to end <laughs> hey, putty, right like this where again I have a little bit of space there at the top of the wrap so there's no pressure points created and I'm just going to bring this around and fasten it on its velcro there so you want the wrap you want to be able to stand back and look at a good wrap and it should basically look smooth your wrap you know, each time that you wrap around, it should look like it's about uh, pretty close to a consistent distance. You know, you don't have some that are wrapped really tight and then all of a sudden you've got it really wide. And you shouldn't be able to, it should look straight, meaning you shouldn't notice that this is suddenly like really pressed in and this up here is really loose. That's what I was talking about earlier with making sure that you have consistent pressure all the way down the wrap. Now, another thing that I'll show you here, I should have pointed this out before I put it on, but 
the one, the quilting part that I put on him here, this is kind of an older style quilting. Now what I have here is what's called a no bow quilting. And this is actually what I prefer to use. It's softer and it's made of a very thin foam with just a real soft um, kind of a plushy fabric over top of it. And what this does is it just, that foam helps better distribute the pressure along the leg. So it's called a no bow because it reduces the chance of injury to the leg due to the pressure not being correct with the wrapping. But I didn't put this one on him because this leg wrap is a little bit longer and it would probably be pretty long on his little short legs. Okay, so next we're gonna go over to the other leg and we're gonna put one of these polo wraps on. So where to use a polo wrap? Now this one, polo wraps are more used for exercise. So they're also designed to provide support for the tendons and the structures of the lower leg, but it's designed to be on for short periods while you're riding. So you would not want to put on a polo wrap when your horse is say in the stall overnight, or you wouldn't want to put on a polo wrap to you know, cover a injury or something like that. Polo wraps are only designed for short wear. The difference between the material is also uh, pretty big too. Polar wraps are a lot stretchier, so they kind of have a lot more give to them, and that's why they can be used more um, during like intense exercise. Whereas the standing wraps, they have stretch too, but they don't have quite as much stretch, and they're also more of a um, they're kind of more like a poly material. They're, you can see the material is a lot thin. It's not quite as plush as these polo wraps. And it's just a different material. It doesn't have quite the give that you want and the stretchiness that you want for exercise. That's why we only use it um, with standing wraps and with a quilted pad. You would never just put a standing wrap on by itself without that quilted pad. Okay, so we're gonna go over here to this leg. Now you're gonna notice when I put this on, the technique is it's the same. So I'm going to put it on basically in the same style. I'm going to start on the inside here and as I wrap it I'm pulling the tendons in and I'm also starting in the bottom or center of the leg. I'm going to work towards the bottom and then I'm going to come back up. And you kind of have to take into account how long your horse's legs are. Like these polo wraps, the one I'm putting on him right now is probably going to end up being just a little bit a little bit long for him. So I'm gonna have to keep the, each time I wrap around, I'm keeping it a little bit shorter, a little bit closer than I did when I was over here with the standing wrap, for example. Okay, now where a polar wrap is a little bit different is when I get down here to his, um, his ankle joint here, to his fetlock area, I'm gonna basically create a sling. So as I bring it down here, I'm gonna bring this and make kind of a sling as I go right by that fetlock. And what that does is it helps create a little support. So it helps kind of give a little support to that joint. And then I'm just gonna keep wrapping here. Bring it up. And again, you want this to end basically right below the knee. Keeping a consistent pressure. Bring it around and Velcro it right on itself. Now another thing to kind of tell if you've gotten the sling right, and I don't have it quite here, you can barely see it, but you should see uh, basically like a little V in the front. And that kind of shows you that you got your sling there to help give some support to that ankle joint. Okay, so here is your polo wrap, here's your standing wrap, and you can see that with both wraps, the technique to put them on was essentially the same, but as I said, they're different materials and they have some different purposes. So, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments. And if you're watching this video anywhere besides crktrainingblog.com, go over there. I've got lots of other free um, riding and training videos for you. And I would love to talk to you in the comments.